screen. Hello again, this is Bob and Stacy, the scientists talking about PEMF and all things related to PEMF that we're interested in. And today, Stacy's going to talk about her favorite and my favorite part of her dissertation. Take it away, Stacy. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Stacy Ravid, and I have a published dissertation. Uh, the title of the dissertation is Describe. Descriptive Exploratory Study of Individuals' Use of a Pulsed Electromagnetic Fields, the Micropulse for Pain Relief. So I would like to jump straight to the results. And I have direct quotes here from participants that I interviewed for this study. And you there's some fascinating information. Pardon? You want me to call up that page? And yes, Dr. Dennis, if you would put up page 126, please. There we go. Okay, I'm going to start with number five. So if you'll scroll down to number five, yep. it's blue. Okay. There we go. I had bursitis in my hip. It was disabling. <clears throat> it hurt so bad. He gave me a steroid shot, shot that wore off, another steroid shot that wore off. They said, the next thing you're going to have is an epidural. I didn't want to do that. Then I remembered the micropulse, so I put that on my hip, and that's gone. I hurt my knee. I put that on. Within a few days, that was gone. I've used it on my wrist, my back, my knee. If I lift something heavy, I use it. I always have the micropulse with me. I wear it a lot, then take it off. I forget about it. I heard something, and I put it back on. I'd be terrified if I didn't have this machine. It's fabulous. Not having pain makes me super girl. I can do things. I used a TENS unit a long time ago, but those really hurt. You can feel them, but this, there's no pain to the equipment. I'm the hugest fan of this ever. It's so much better than medication and it would save that opiate problem that we have now. So I think Dr. Dennis is a genius. Well, I can assure you that opinions vary. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, but just just let me take one step back now these are just to make it clear to everyone these are you, during your dissertation and your interviews right you you allowed people to just uh, comment freely right just yes. unsolicited unstructured comments so yeah. that's what we're talking about here so this is just something that one of the people said uh, mm -hmm. during your interview right without any prompting that's correct dr. Dennis and what I really like about this interview was that this participant had used the micropulse for so many different things. And here she says the hip, the back, the ankle, the wrist, and she would carry it around with her. And if she had an injury, she would use it right away. Uh, I wanted to focus on her line about, I would be terrified if I didn't have this machine. I have talked to quite a few people and myself included that we do keep the machine with us. And if we travel, we take it with us because if we have an injury, we use it on that injury right away. This particular participant had suffered from so much pain for so long and had tried so many pharmaceuticals and uh, various modalities. And she, there's a whole other part to her interview. And she talked about how it was a miracle to find something that worked on so many different types of pain. Well, you know, I can say that this one really does touch upon some something that I feel because mm -hmm. before I had really developed it about 10 years ago, the, the first prototypes of it, um, I would throw my back out so frequently, you know, every week or so. And then I would be completely immobilized for days. Mm -hmm. and I was losing work time. I was losing everything my whole life. And so I actually am terrified about the possibility of not having one. Mm -hmm. Like if I travel somewhere, I mean, I'm so extreme about it. I'll usually take two with me on different bags. And then very often, if it's going to be a long trip, I mail one ahead to where I'm staying because mm -hmm. I cannot go more than about three days without one. Wow. Yeah. Do they allow you to take it on the plane in your purse and so forth? Um, I have never had any trouble with it on the plane. You just tell them that it's a TENS device because mm -hmm. it technically it is. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's very small. And every now and then they get a little bit worried about the batteries. But, you know, you have to manage batteries 
like if you're a tourist, you know, you got the camcorder or something. But basically, yeah, um, I've never had trouble with it. I've taken it, uh, you know, to foreign countries, taken it to, uh, you know, uh, all over the country in the United States for different talks and stuff. So I never had trouble with it. But then again, they change the rules all the mm -hmm. time, right? I was actually in the airport in Atlanta when they changed the rules on liquid drinks. Mm -hmm. The first half of the line ahead of me got on the airplane with their pop and their water. And then they stopped all lines. They brought out a bunch of garbage cans. They took every liquid away from everyone else who had not boarded the airplane yet. I was actually in Atlanta when that happened. And wow. it, it, this, so what I'm saying is people ask me, well, is this safe to bring on planes? And the answer is right this second, I think it is. But mm -hmm. a second from now, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you will scroll to number eight. <clears throat> Certainly will. I may have to work just half a day and go back to the office and get in my recliner with an ice pack and make phone calls. The pain I had was in my muscles. I used to call it random acts of pain. If it gets too bad, it feels like an elephant standing on my foot. It makes me want to start drinking heavily again. I bought like four or five micropulses on eBay. I'm amazed. I'm trying to tell everyone about it. I've dropped it from the countertop and kicked it across and it still doesn't break. It never stops. Everyone I've ever bought one is so well made. I can drop it on concrete and it's just fine. It is diminishing my pain 10 minutes that I had it on time and time again. Uh, so one of the, this is an incredible story. This participant, he had started drinking and taking drugs because he was in so much pain. This was after he tried many pharmaceuticals, many modalities, and he had chronic pain for a long time with no relief. I love this comment, random acts of pain. And the way he describes his pain, there's more to his story and he really goes into depth about his pain. And he talks about the elephant standing on his foot and how at work he would all of a sudden have to stop working. And like he said, go in the office. But because he used the micropulse and it diminished his pain, he actually stopped drinking and stop taking drugs. Wow, that's remarkable. Mm -hmm. And he loved to talk about how the Micropulse was so well made. He worked in, a, he was a contractor and he worked around you know, equipment and machinery and he said he was constantly dropping it and he would pick it up and put it back on and it would still work. So I love that part of the story too. Yeah, I, I wish I could make them more robust. People do occasionally break them Usually they'll pull the wires out of the coils and people are like, can you make it stronger? And yeah, I can make it stronger, but then a lot of people don't break them. They're more careful with them. But if I make it stronger, then they're heavier and they're stiffer and they're more expensive. So mm -hmm. at some point you end up with what's the best design for the most people. And mm -hmm. I think we pretty much hit on that design at this point, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's remarkable that he's, you know, he can do that. We, we do get some back though that are like, uh, we've had at least two that people drove over in cars. We were able to fix them. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing, so, Dr. Dennis. I had to replace some plastic parts, but yeah, it works fine. Wow. So this participant, after many, many, many years of pain in pharmaceuticals and missing work and alcohol and drugs, he, as he told me, he was able to live a normal life again, and he, quote, got his life back. But I always remember his description of random acts of pain. So moving on to number nine, this one is fascinating to me. I was an ER nurse for 17 years and I've taken care of many patients with AFib. This participant used the micropulse for their AFib. So I won't read the whole thing. I'm just gonna read a couple sentences. It's like anybody with chronic pain says, is it going to be like this the rest of my life? My wife has AFib or had AFib and we were going to go through ablation. She canceled the ablation and the medication she was taking beforehand was really doing a number on her. So she stopped taking that. I said, try the micropulse. She put it on her heart and the next day she had no AFib. Six months out, she had no AFib and her vital signs were back to normal and heart rate was normal. She went to the ER, they checked her, but she wasn't a fibbing. She went back to her cardiologist. 
And he said, you don't have a fib now while I'm checking you, what are you doing? So she told him about the micropulse and he wrote it down and he said he was going to look into it. I followed up with them and she still did not have AFib several months later. Wow. And also, I, I think the last uh, few sentences are really, it, it just reinforces what a lot of people, including me, think. I would be terrified if I did not have this machine. Because if you don't have one, you basically have to go back to a life of pain. Mm -hmm. There's not a single person that I know of who would want to do that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, but but the first uh, the first sentence is exactly right. You get to a point with chronic pain when you, you start mm -hmm. to seriously ask the question. You ask this question: Is this my life now? Am I going mm -hmm. to be in pain like this for my entire life? Mm -hmm. And sadly, with chronic pain, the answer is you know yes. Given mm -hmm. other treatments that they have available like opioids and everything yeah you just have to live with it your whole life mm -hmm. it's terrible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow okay okay so i would like to go to number 11. Okay, okay. actually i love uh if you'll go to number 10. sure I've put that micropulse on every kind of pain I have. Every time I have an ache or whatever, I put it on. I swear, in like 30 minutes or so, the pain is gone. It would feel like somebody oiled my entire neck. The inflammation was gone. The pain was gone. I can't explain it medically, but all I can tell you is I have 90% less pain. If it comes back, I go to the machine. It does something that makes it feel like someone has oiled my stiff joints and my ridiculously stiff ligaments. I can't explain it. I don't understand it, but I don't have the pain I used to have. I am really happy for these people. Mm -hmm. Every time I read this part of your dissertation, I always think to myself, I am just so happy I was able to help some of these people. You've helped a lot of people. So his description about it oiling his entire neck I've talked to several participants that sort of described it that way, that before it felt like it was bone on bone, uh, or there was this incredible muscle stiffness that nothing would loosen the muscles. And then when they used the micro pulse, it felt like there was this you know, oil phenomenon or this fluid phenomenon that some kind, somehow came in and loosened everything and oiled the areas. So I know it decreases inflammation and it works on a cellular level, but this phenomenon is amazing to me, this concept of it, quote, oiling the entire neck. Do you have any explanation for that? Well, I think um, the way to think about it is, with any joint, is if it's over inflamed, then the joint won't be working properly. It won't have the fluids, you know, the the, the the way that articular cartilage works, the way that fibrocartilage in the, in the back works is kind of, kind of complicated. It's like a tissue engineering thing. But if it's inflamed, then that tissue becomes weaker. It's more prone to injury. And it also doesn't slide as well. So if you can reduce the inflammation, see, it's, it's that I don't think the main action of the PEMF systems that I've designed is mm -hmm. that it directly fixes something. What it does is it reduces the inflammation that's making the tissues not work, whether that's uh, cartilage or muscle or nerve, whatever. Mm -hmm. When you get rid of the inflammation, the tissue can start to act normally. So when they're saying that their neck is, feels like it's oiled, well, actually, it's just the joints working properly again. It's not that it's, it's doing anything directly. It's that it, it's reducing the inflammation. And then indirectly, it's just letting the joints function properly again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, I'd like to move to number 12. This is one of my favorite stories that I heard from participants there. I just want to say that all of the input that I had from in individuals, they're all incredible. And all the stories are my favorite stories. Uh, number 12 is a little bit unique because they used it on their eyes. Not a lot of people have used the micropulse on their eyes. 
So I want to just focus on this story for a few minutes. <clears throat> I could feel something flowing in my body in that area and it didn't hurt anymore. My wife used it on her eyes to help her vision. She said, these glasses are now too strong. So I said, let's go to the doctor and have our vision checked. We both have the same doctor, see the same person. We had a retinal scan, not just the regular eye exam. We did that about a month apart. The doctor was kind of surprised. I mean, we are early 30s, same age. She goes in and she's 20, 20 in the right eye. He couldn't explain it. She was unchanged in the left eye about 20, 20. He did the retinal scan and her right eye was just as clean and clear as it can be in, as the other eye. The doctor told us your vision can get better, but not a lot. This is kind of final frontier stuff to me, fixing three eyes. So basically what he and his wife did was they only used the micropulse on one eye. They were both having vision issues and gl glasses issues, even though they were in their early thirties. So one eye, they did not use the micropulse, the other eye they did, and they went into the eye doctor and had the scan. And it turned out that the eye they were using the micropulse on had increased vision and they had to change their glasses. They ended up using the micropulse on both eyes. And he had told me last time I talked to him that they were not using glasses at that time. Wow. So um, I can say that, uh, that, um, I've been told by, by very reliable and very knowledgeable clinical people that uh, PEMF is really good for most conditions of the eye, virtually all conditions of the eye. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I don't know that for a fact, um, but there's a belief out there that PEMF is really good for that. And I, I haven't, I've tried it. I haven't experienced myself. I haven't experienced an improvement in vision so I don't know what percentage of people would, mm -hmm. and I haven't studied it. It's just one of those areas I haven't studied because I'm so focused, you know, on pain or something like pain. Mm -hmm. um, but vision, yeah, gosh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. and that's amazing though. There are so many problems with the eye that really don't have very good treatments. And if we can do something for them like uveitis and things for PMF, that would be fabulous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's a couple that I'm interviewing right now and they are doing a study using the micropulse on their eyes. They're using it for an ailment uh, that they have of their eyes and also glaucoma and also an infection. Wow. So I'm interested to see how the micropulse works for all three of their conditions. And I will keep you posted on that. Yeah, if that's you great. Go to number 18. And actually, if you look at number 17, it's the most effective pain reliever I have found. That was someone's experience. And this participant had tried everything. They had tried all kinds of pharmaceuticals, holistic modalities, chiropractor, everything. And they just summed it up into one sentence. Well, it's the most effective pain reliever I have found. Now we, you and I talked about this before. I think that was one of the questions you asked in your dissertation. That was part of the structured questions. Do you remember how many different things the average person had tried before they tried PEMF? Oh yes. I have all that documented. Yes, sir. And that's all in your dissertation. And when I ask um, clinicians the same question, they give me answers like somewhere between 12 and 24 things they tried before PEMF. And so I think of PMF as sort of like car keys. They're always in the very last place you look. Mm -hmm. if you lost your car keys, <laughs> right. you know, and, and, and it's amazing. I think that, that PMF more than anything else that you can do for pain is the last thing you'll try. Mm -hmm. And I personally believe since it's, it can be so uh, not dangerous because it's such low power, the, the ones that we make are lower than a watt and they're mm -hmm. very low frequency. It should be something people try first and not mm -hmm. last. Mm -hmm. I so. agree. I agree. I figured out that part of the reason people are not trying it as one of the first go-to modalities is because a lot of people still don't know about it. I think you're right. People just have never heard of it. And then the other, the secondary barrier, and this kind of came out in that uh, survey that you and I were involved in. I think you were involved in this with me at uh, ACIM meeting a couple of years ago, mm -hmm, uh, yes. a survey, and 
um, you know, barrier number one is that most people have never heard of it. And then barrier number two is most PEMF systems are just way outrageously too expensive. Yes, that's definitely one of the issues. Uh, so if we can look at number 18, Okay. I've used it on my teeth. I've had two teeth extracted at different times and a dental implant put in with the last one. I found that the micropulse to be very helpful with the pain and swelling. I haven't had to take any pain medications after the implant or after the extractions. Oh, I do want to tell you one weird thing with the ISIS. I got a lump on my genitals. It might have been herpes. I used them double coils on my crotch three nights of that before I went to sleep. It went away, no problems. So focusing on the teeth, uh, this participant told me that one time he went into the dentist for an extraction, but he did not want to have the Novocaine and he used the Micropulse ahead of time and he had a tooth extracted without Novocaine. You know, that's actually not the first time I've heard that. We, we did a study with this. I think I told you about it, a study in like, just before the uh, Arab Spring, you know, 15 years ago, in 2005, 2006 in Egypt, at the Dent School of Dentistry in Alexandria. And they found that people could have major craniofacial surgery and then within a day, they didn't need any pain meds. And that's widely regarded to be one of the most painful, post-surgical, painful operations you can do where they reconstruct the bones in like your maxillary arch. And everybody was just astonished by that, that they just didn't even need pain meds. They actually had patients who had had facial reconstruction just handing back bottles of pain meds saying, I really don't need them. <laughs> that's incredible. You know my story, I used the Micropulse on a tooth I had and I saved it from being extracted. I had the worst, some of the worst pain I've ever had in my life. And it, if it wasn't for the Micropulse, I really don't know what I would have done. Well, you know, I know I talked to you at the time and you were, yeah. uh, you were pretty much uh, worried about it as you should. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you about a year ago, I started having the swelling on the left side of my face down just mm -hmm. below the jawline. And I mean, it was really getting big and prominent and I didn't do anything to it for about a day and a half. And then I started getting really worried, um, but it wasn't painful. So I didn't have the pain incentive. I was just like, oh, maybe I just got a little piece of food lodged somewhere. And it started getting really big and started worrying me. I put, I just laid down on some ICES coils and some ISIS coils just on a regular setting. And it just like, I woke up the next morning, it was gone. Wow. wow. So I never actually, I've never mentioned that to anybody, but I use it all the time for things like that. If I start to have swelling or anything anywhere, it mm -hmm. just really helps me control that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. Yes. I've spoken with several people that have used it on their teeth. This particular uh, participant had a lot of dental work. So he's used it a lot for his pain and like I said before, he had extractions. So we'll do two more and then we'll stop for today. And what we'll do next time is we will go over how people are actually using the micropulse on different parts of their bodies. And I'll give a demonstration and we can talk about the different programs and settings and how to apply the micropulse coils to your body. Uh, right now, we're going to look at number 19. Okay. So this participant talked a lot about musculoskeletal pain. Uh, from the time I started using it, I got better so fast that I tried it on my shoulder and the lower back. I had the same experience with the shoulder. I've used off and on hydrocodone. I've done things like that. I try to really stay away from any oral medication or pharmaceuticals because this has really been the most effective thing I could do. Chronic pain is not well managed. Physicians are not very understanding of chronic pain. You know, for us, the micropulse has given, oh, my daughter a new lease on life. She's been able to enjoy her life. She's in her 40s and she was struggling, uh, but the micropulse helped her to keep her pain under control. So this participant had used the micropulse for her own musculoskeletal pain, and then also her daughter started using it. I wanted to highlight something here that she talked about is how chronic pain is not well managed. And 
a lot of healthcare professionals are not very understanding of chronic pain. And this is something I'm trying to do as a nurse and a PhD nurse is bring more awareness to people's experiences of pain and we need to find more solutions and we need to be more compassionate for these people. Well, you know, my story on this is very much like that. I mean, after I had my major back injury years and years ago, just before I started developing this, um, I would go to different pain clinics and it was always the same. They would, they would give me a big fat prescription for oxycodone or the equivalent. Um, and then I'd go back for more and they'd say, well, no, you can't have any more. And I said, well, you know, I'm out, you know? And so they started putting notes in my medical file, you know, drug seeking behavior. I wasn't seeking drugs. I was seeking pain relief, mm -hmm. you know? So I know the cruelty and the dehumanizing cruelty of, of all of this. And I just really, I guess, you know, my heart goes out to people who are, are in pain. And a lot of people ask me about a lot of other uses for ICS, you know, for ICS PMF. There's a lot of other uses, but the main thing that matters to me is pain. Because mm -hmm. that is just people who, I think there's two kinds of people in the world. People who have, have, have really experienced chronic pain. And in order to experience it, you have to get to that question after five, five or six months, gee whiz, am I going to be this way for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. And the moment you realize that, yes, that you are, that's when you are a chronic pain sufferer. Before that, you're somebody who's, who's trying to fight it as if it's acute pain. But you cannot ever see the world the same way again once you've mm -hmm. really had chronic pain. Yes, that's, that's true. I just experienced it this last year, and I have more compassion and understanding for people in pain than ever before. And there, there are times when you ask yourself, is this going to be it for the rest of my life? Uh, let's look at number 20 real quick. <clears throat> so this participant talked about the lived experience. You know, any person's lived experience is worth something. But I do think that research can provide much more in the way of evidence for it. It really needs to be evidence-based before physicians are going to go for it. Finding out more about it is crucial to it being more widely accepted. So I thought this was really poignant that they highlighted in their interview, and they're absolutely correct that there needs to be more research with PEMF so that physicians will take it seriously and more people will be exposed to this type of pain relief. Well, you know, I mean, I think that's a reasonable opinion to have. Mm -hmm. That's a reasonable, you'd think if we lived in a reasonable evidence-based world, that's the way it would work. But I can tell you that I have shown some of my very closest colleagues, really good friends of mine. I have their home phone numbers on my cell phone. That we, we, we used to uh, go mountain biking together and stuff and, and they're surgeons or other physicians and I'll show them evidence and they'll say, oh, that was just placebo. And I remember showing, it was a chairman of a, of a plastic surgery department at a major university. I showed him that we had done this study with rats and, and pain and inflammation that a certified independent research lab that's FDA approved and everything like that for drug testing. Very, very strong evidence of its effect. And he said, oh, that's just placebo. And I said, really? Rats? Mm -hmm. he said, oh, yeah, the placebo effect now is like 70%. You can unshare your screen now. We're going to just yeah. talk a few minutes. and So there we go. Okay, so the, uh, the thing is that, uh, that there are many physicians, I would say most, mm -hmm. they will simply not look at any amount of data. They'll say, well, I need to see another study. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I, if I believe that. Well, you know, because there's a stigma against this. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand, there's been like about a thousand papers. It's actually closer to 2,000 on the beneficial effects of PEMF mm -hmm. and zero so far as I can find on the negatives of PEMF mm -hmm. and a huge number of them relate to pain. And you know, how much more evidence do you want? Mm -hmm. But the, the fact is that a reasonable person would say, well, you need to do a scientific study to prove it. But here's the problem. Scientific studies never prove anything. You don't prove anything with science. What you do is you, is you is you work the probabilities well we're probably right we're we're 90 sure we're right or 99 sure we're right 
or 99.99999% sure we're right. But you never hear a real scientist say, nope, it's proven, it's done. Mm-hmm. It's solid, forever, written in stone. That just doesn't happen. And then some people take that, like they recently, they've been twisting these probabilities into, well, it's not proven. Well, nothing, absolutely nothing. Zero in science is proven. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's all probabilities. Proven means the probability is 1.000000. Nothing has 100% probability in science. There's mm-hmm. always room for, oh, okay, we missed something. Mm-hmm. It's just like, you know, what does it take to convince you? Medically, for medical research, it's one out of 20, P less than 0.05, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's what that means. It's a one in 20 chance that you're seeing something that's not there. In physics, when they do physics experiments, it's one in a million, roughly. They've got to be, you know, Right, so the probability is much tighter. The p-value has to be much smaller. Um, mm-hmm. Different sciences are different, but medical research, because there's so much individual variability, they, they're willing to take a 5% chance that they're just wrong. Mm-hmm. You know? But you never prove anything. All you're doing is, is, you're, is you're establishing a probability that there's something there. So there's no study that you can do. There's no experiment. There's no data that will, mm-hmm. that will prove it. I want to invite people, if you are watching and you use the MicroPulse, I would be interested in talking to you about your experience with the MicroPulse. Uh, You could email me if you're interested at consultdrdrpain at gmail.com. My email is also on the MicroPulse website. Uh, But if you have been using it for different things, I would love to talk to you. So next week, we will go into some specifics of how to use the MicroPulse, where the settings and so forth. But thank you all for joining us today. And I hope you have a pain-free day. Wonderful talking to you again, Stacy, as always. And we'll talk to everyone later.